Hey guys, and welcome to the April Pickups video. First up, a little update on Mega Man on PC Part 3. The editing is about 75% done, so yeah, it's getting there. With that out of the way, let's take a look at some pickups. Now, April was a slowish month. There were some big flea markets, but not a lot of stuff there, so yeah. But let's just start out. On April 1st, it was Germany time. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. And down there, I only picked up one thing. Somebody wrote me on the Facebook. I'm curious. <laughs> so where were we? Germany, yeah. Picked up one thing, and that one thing was a dream key for the Dreamcast, you know. The browser, version 1.5. Yeah, I paid a little bit over a buck for that, so... Yeah, might as well, you know. Then on April 2nd, it was the first big flea market of the month. It's like a yearly thing, and I usually don't really pick anything up there. But this time they actually had a bit of stuff, so let's take a look. First up, three PS2 titles, Kako Duty 3, Constantine the video game, and Wild Wild Racing. Put them over there. One PlayStation 3 title, the Essentials version of Killzone 2. One Xbox 360 title, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. And then there were six Wii games. First up, we have The Lord of the Rings, Aragorn's Quest, yeah. and Mini Ninjas, Rayman Raving Rabbits, The Sims 3, Spore Hero, and The Skycrawlers Innocent Aces. Apparently, this is quite uncommon, so pretty cool, right? Gotta check it out. Everything almost fell. And there were one big box PC game, Star Wars Episode 1, The Gungan Frontier. So, as you know, I love them big box PC games. And then I picked this up because I remember I had it as a child. It's like a dog pack thing with turtles coloring and at the zoo coloring. Yeah, I don't know. I remember having it as a child, as I said, so couldn't help but pick that up. Not really games, per se, but it does say Double Fun Pack, full version games, volume 10. So yeah, I had to pick that up. Childhood memories and all that. I remember sitting around coloring them turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And the best thing about all of these, they were about 75 cents each. So, pretty decent pickup if you ask me. Yay! Putting them down again! And also picked up one last thing there. A Wii mode with a nunchuck in this fishing pole attachment thing. And for all of this shit right here, about one and a half bucks. Can never get too many Wii controllers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then later on the second I went to a monthly flea market that I hadn't been to for a while. Mainly because they never have any games, but this time they had one that I found interesting. A promotional copy of Mike Tyson Heavyweight Boxing Limited Edition. I've never seen a promotional copy of a PS2 game like this. They're usually in like those little jewel cases, so I kinda had to pick that up. It even comes with a manual, so yeah, I don't know. Never seen anything like that before, so I couldn't help pick it up. It's actually funny, when you look at it, you can't really tell it's a PS2 title. If you look at the side, there's the PlayStation logo right there, but it doesn't say PlayStation 2 up here as it usually does on PS2 titles. You have to look all the way down here, where it says this software is only compatible with the PlayStation 2 computer entertainment system. And, hell, you know, as the region. And that was about 60 cents, so I had to pick that up. Then on April 9th, I went to a few thrift stores here and there. Only found stuff at two places. In the first place, I found this. A big box PC game, brand new. It's like a Danish children's game called Super Detective Owner. I don't even think you need me to translate Super Detectives. And that was about 75 cents, so that's why I picked that up. Then at the next store where I picked something up, I picked up two PS2 titles for about one and a half bucks each. Ratchet and Clank 3 and The Mark of Cree. Or Cry. However you want to pronounce that. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't have this, so pretty cool, right? Yeah, one and a half bucks each. So now it's time for a weird story, if you will. On April 10th, I went on Facebook searching for a lawnmower. And the guy that responded was like, hey, you can come pick it up now. And I did. So I went there, I got the lawnmower and everything. Got to mow the lawn out there. One of the downsides of living in a house. 
but yeah, I figured while I was there, I might as well ask if he's like got some games, because that's what you do when you collect them games. And funnily enough, he said he might actually have something, and he went to look and everything, and he came out with a Game Boy Color, the atomic purple one. Who would have thought, right? And he had some stuff for it as well here, a rechargeable battery station for the Game Boy Color, which is actually weird considering the battery cover is actually here. You would think when they have these rechargeable battery packs that this would get lost at some point, but I guess not, which is cool. And there were also six games, nothing too special, but it's games. Dr. Mario, Jurassic Park, Kirby Streamland, Kirby Star Stacker, Super Mario Land, and Tetris Attack. And there were also this, the Blaze Exploder cheat cartridge. It's kind of like a game genie, you know, and it has manual, so I can look them codes up and stuff. It's pretty cool. There's a bunch of cheats already preloaded on this thing, so go nuts. And this is supposedly a bit uncommon as well, so it's all good. And he had two random manuals for games that he didn't have. Knockout Kings for the Game Boy Color and Lego Bionicle for the Game Boy Advance. So yeah, that was a pretty cool experience. Asking someone, hey, you got any games? And he'd be like, hell yeah, man, she. So, yeah. But I did have to pay a little bit over 30 bucks for this stuff. But hey, it's still a pretty good deal. And now, putting down all the stuff again. Again. Putting down all the stuff again. Okay, so what's next? There it is. On April 11th, I went to a couple of thrift stores again and only found something at one store. And this is kind of weird. Book of Spells for the PS3. You know, it's like a PlayStation Move title. Some Harry Potter stuff. But it's complete in here. The game and the spell book and stuff. So, 75 cents? Might as well. You know? Then on April 13th. The guy that I bought the lawnmower from contacted me on Facebook and was like, Would you be interested in some Nintendo DS's? And I'm like, Sure. So I went looking and I ended up buying two red DSi's. Both works fine, just need a little cleanup. And they both had flashcards in them. Yay. This is the Ace card too, with a 4GB SD card in there. And the other one was an R4 Revolution, and this is an 8GB SD card. You can always use them SD cards, you know, for stuff. Maybe even the camera. And one boxed game, Danish copy of Rita Rabbit, no manual sadly. And a few loose ones, a Danish children's game, uh -huh. and build a bear workshop. And both the DSIs came with their chargers, which is pretty cool because you can always use some chargers, you know what I'm saying? And this big bag for the DS. Yeah. And I paid about 38 bucks for this stuff. The reason why I actually bought this stuff is because he said he knew that he had the boxes and manuals for the DS's somewhere and he would contact me whenever he found them. And he also said if he finds other games and stuff, I can just come pick him up. That's pretty cool. And he found another Gay Boy game that I got for free because that would just be part of the other deal earlier in the month with the Game Boy Color. And that's Pokemon Red. That's a pretty sweet title to add to a deal for free, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, as I said, 38 bucks for this stuff. Oh yeah, and they both have their touch pins and everything. It's alright. Not the best pickup in the world, but not the worst either, you know? Yeah, you know. Then on the 15th, I went to my local junkyard store. I hadn't been there for a while. The prices have skyrocketed lately, so I don't go there that often. But I went there on the 15th and I actually picked something up. Something weird. You know, when you collect games, sometimes you just come home with some weird stuff. And this was one of those times. For one and a half bucks, I picked up the Spider-Man Triple Threat TV Action Game. Yeah, some kind of plug and play motion control game. As you can see, this guy is, is very excited to have this around his wrist. So he can be like, hey, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. But yeah, it looked weird. So I picked it up for one and a half bucks. It might be interesting doing a video on this one day, maybe. Then on the 16th, I went to some flea markets and I didn't find anything. Ended the day by going to a fridge store that I don't go to that often. And I actually picked up two PS1 titles there. It's been a while, huh? And those were Batman Gotham City Racer and Die Hard Trilogy 2. Both nice and complete. The cover's a bit cracked here. You can see somebody taped it up, so yeah. But complete, discs in good condition and everything. And they were about one and a half bucks each. My PlayStation 1 collection isn't growing fast enough. Then after the 16th, I didn't really go game hunting at all until the very end of the month. But 
What an end. So the weekend spanning from Friday the 29th until Sunday, May 1st. Damn, a lot of stuff. Most of it on Sunday, which is the first, so you're gonna have to wait until next month's Pickers video to find out. But there were a lot of stuff, yay. But let's have a look at what I picked up on the 29th. On the 29th, I went to a couple of flea markets. The first one is like at a retirement home. I go there every year, never found anything, but I actually picked up a few things there this time. First thing I picked up was a joystick called the Arcade. I actually don't know which console this is supposed to be for, like Commodore 64, maybe the Amiga 500, maybe multiple systems. Looks like I could plug it in my Sega Master System. So yeah, that was the first thing, but that was not the only joystick I picked up. I also picked up a boxed Quickshot 2, and this is for use with the Atari video game system, CS Video Arcade, Atari 400 with 800 computers, Commodore VIC-20, Commodore 64, and some other very number-heavy computer titles. Yeah, see the box is not in the best condition, but it's there, so that's pretty cool. 1984 with auto fire option. So yeah, boxed joystick. And the last thing I picked up there was actually a Commodore 64 game! And that was Super Cycle! One of them cassette tape games, so yeah. And these things were a little bit under 4 bucks, so I figured might as well, you know. But after that free market I went to another one. It's actually the same one where I picked up the American Resident Evil Zero and Resident Evil Remake on the GameCube last year. If you remember, I don't blame you if you don't. So I was hoping to find some stuff there this year as well. And I did! So to get the boring stuff out of the way, two Game Boy Advance bags. These were filled with what I'm going to show you. Now to the more interesting stuff, I guess. Here is two four-player Game Boy Advance link cables. I don't know how many four-player Game Boy Advance games there are. I actually don't know if it's for the Game Boy Advance or the Game Boy Color. One second. Well, it fits in the Game Boy Advance SP, so yeah, link cables. But other than that, a little stack of random games here. First up, Sega Rally on the PSP. Some random Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, and a Game Boy title here. I'm just gonna go through them as I pick them up. Garfield, The Search for Pookie. I think, yeah, on the Game Boy Advance. An Italian copy of Dragon Ball C, The Legacy of Goku, on the Game Boy Advance as well. And Yoshi's Island Super Mario Advance 3, also on the Game Boy Advance. More games, on the Game Boy Color, Disney Dinosaur, 007 The World Is Not Enough, and Rayman. And then three more games here, probably the best in this lot here. Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Silver, and Pokemon Gold, all in pretty good condition, so gotta get them Pokemans games. <coughs> I have a sore throat today. <coughs> and all of that stuff was seven bucks, so pretty sweet deal if you ask me. Did you ask me? And now we're already at the last pickup of the month. On the 30th, the very last day, I went to some flea... Did I go to a flea market that day? Or was it just randomly there? Why was I there? I'm sorry guys, I'm thinking right now. I can't really figure out what I did on that day. I know where I picked up the stuff, but why was I there? Was I there just for the rules? I really can't remember what I was doing that day. But at a junkyard store I picked up four GameCube titles. I never see GameCube titles, so whenever I see them, I have to pick them up. And in this case it was a good thing, because 75 cents each, not fantastic titles by any means, but maybe they're pretty good. First up we have James Bond 007 Agent Under Fire. This one is the only one that doesn't have his manual, but yeah. 75 cents, can't go wrong with that. Then Medal of Honor Frontline, True Crime Streets of LA, and and the best game in here, maybe? Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3? It's a pretty good game, you know it is. So yeah, as I said, 75 cents each. Why wouldn't I pick him up? And I don't have any of these on the GameCube, so yeah. It still bothers me that I can't really figure out why I was there that day. I didn't go there just to look for games, like probably just went in there on the way home or something like that. It really annoys me that I can't remember. But hey, whatever. I showed you everything that I picked up during that April though. Why was so weird? So yeah, that was it. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, as I usually ask of you. Should be a given by now. But it's just customary on YouTube to do that. I guess it triggers something somewhere. I don't know. Damn, I'm tired. Could, could you tell that throughout this video? Tell me if you could. And also, tell me what you picked up lately. As you know, I would really like to know. So that was it for this time. Stay tuned for whatever video comes next. Who knows? Bye!
I'm getting too old for stuff like that. I was just thinking, what if I found out it wasn't recording? That would suck.